Look to the northern slopes of Arizona's Pinnacle Peak and you'll discover a Scottsdale gem. The True North Golf Club, where lush green fairways meander through a rugged high Sonoran desert strewn with massive granite boulders. Today we're exploring the beautiful monument course at True North to see why it ranks at the top of every golfer's bucket list. It's a picture perfect backdrop and we've got our cameras rolling. I'm Kate Longworth, we're teeing up Golf AZ. It's more than just a game out here at Troon North. It is an ultimate golf experience. And here to talk all about that is director of golf, Sam Brookman. And I'll tell you what, Sam, if you gotta go to work every day to earn a living, this is the place to be. Yeah, it's not too bad. We, we deal with it day in and day out, but yeah, we get her done. Well, we both have a job to do out here, so let's get to it. And if you would just tell me a little bit about your two amazing courses. Yeah, if, I, I guess the big thing is, is just our setting. We have a beautiful landscape setting here that Tom Weisskopf designed. Uh, two golf courses that take in that particular design. He didn't move a lot of rocks or do anything like that. That one was in the way, and so I'm gonna build a golf course around it. So the whole way around this particular, both golf courses, you're going to see out, uh, outcroppings, rock outcroppings and things like that that he built out that makes it super challenging, super beautiful, and a ton of fun to play as well. You guys really are the hallmark of desert golf out here. You see the scene, you're in the desert, yet you're playing a game. Why was that important for you to keep this serene surrounding? Yeah, I think it was part of our founder from Troon that had the wherewithal to when they started designing golf courses back then of, hey, instead of a water hazard or high rough being here, how about desert? So it became that target golf thing and he just kept that theme. And again, just working with Tom Weisskopf to pull that off and it just becomes this masterpiece that you get to play in day in and day out. That's uh, just like I say, a ton of fun to play, very challenging and very beautiful. So just talk about some of that fun and those challenges out there too. Or what's the average golfer get when they come out here? Uh, the golf course basically just speaks for itself. Every golf hole out here is unique and different. So you don't play this, feel like you're at the same place. And again, with the, the hills and the landscape and around in the mountains, you're just into a very scenic, scenic uh, place. Um, how experienced do you have to be to experience the beauty out here yeah, and enjoy it? Again, going back to the designer, they have roughly five tee boxes on every hole. So you can go from 4,000 yards all the way to 7,000 yards and in between all during your round to find out what kind of course you want to challenge and, and you know be challenged by or just enjoy. Uh, both our golf courses, one of them's a little more challenging and targeted in the pinnacle course versus the monument course is a little more open, a little more generous, but both uh, very hard. Most of our out-of-towners that are coming in and playing are like, this course is hard. Very, very hard. So you want to keep it on the green grass and not in the brown grass. And you help people who come out here. You guys have a lot in place to make this an enjoyable experience out here. The Callaway Performance Center, and I know there's some technology involved when you're out on the course. Can you just walk me through some of that? Sure, some of the amenities that we have out here besides the scenery and the, and, and the challenging golf for us is um, the, the actual golf cart has a GPS on it, so you kind of know where you're at on the golf course and how far you've got to hit it because of just the obstacles that Tom Weisskopf put out in front of you. Um, also, we have bent grass greens, which we're a little higher elevation up here, so we can grow green grass year round. And so that just makes for a great putting surface, which a lot of our outer towners are looking for. Sam, we've talked a lot about the experience out on the course, but what else do you guys offer here on site at True North? Yeah, besides the golf, there's all kinds of things that extras that we do, try to little small things that help. Uh, during our main season, we offer caddies, caddies to come around to help them get around the course and find their golf balls. Because yeah. would you believe it? People lose their golf balls out here. <laughs> so that really helps the enhancement as well. We offer uh, tournaments and outings, anything from a small, uh, hey, we got a group of 16 coming in from out of town and want to go have fun come to True North, we'd love to have you. The other one are big charity tournaments and things like that that we've done in the past for people. So we try to hit the whole gamut of everything they can do here at True North to uh, encompass what a great opportunity and, and uh, golf experience they can have any way that we can. 
Other things we offer just behind the scenes are just, hey, you get to come in and play golf, enjoy our restaurant that we have. Uh, we offer weddings too, from uh, people wanting to come out and make a commitment to one another. We have beautiful scenery for that and a great spot for that as well for people to get married. We offer banquets and things like that for different people because of the, the amenities that we have up at our clubhouse. So we try to do as much as we can day in and day out to help them and not only have a good golf experience, but maybe do some little extra things too. And do you have any partnerships with the community if folks are coming out here to just kind of experience the desert on a whole? So yes, we have a great uh, partnership with Four Seasons just over the, just down the road from us, very close by, where a bunch of their guests will come and experience True North as well. So that's a nice amenity that we have and a great partnership with them day in and day out to, to again, enjoy the desert pure desert classic. Are there any other packages and deals people should be aware of? Yeah, mainly the main thing for us because we are uh, so have so many players that come out from all over is our Troon card that our Troon corporate office, which is our flagship, uh, they're our, their flagship course and they're out of uh, Scottsdale here. They offer a Troon card through TroonCard.com that if you play a lot of courses in the Valley and we're one of those, so we want you to come play us as much as possible, but it offers discounts for fees for people to come and play. Also, they can earn points through playing any of Troon courses anywhere in the world because we're worldwide. They can earn points towards Troon Rewards at TroonRewards.com too and just accumulate and be a great customer for us and, and we kind of give them back a little bit towards earn points towards free golf. So. Well, I think you really gave us the lay of the land, and now we really want to get to know the monument course. So when we come back, we are going to check in with an expert to get the inside tips with a little flyover of this. I mean, you don't want to go anywhere. beginner or an experienced golfer, a trip to the Callaway Performance Center here at True North is a step in the right direction, or perhaps is one step closer to shooting the lowest round of your life. Let's check in now with Director of Instruction, Doug Hammer. Well, Doug, I was hoping you could give us a little insight on the services you provide here. Yes, so we're in the Callaway Performance Center at True North, and uh, we inside this room we do complete bag club fittings. Um, we also offer golf instruction, multi-day golf schools, really a full menu to help everybody cover every aspect that would improve their game. So what tools and technology do you use to find that right equipment? Right, so um, we do fittings both indoors and outdoors. So we use a, a portable, what's called TrackMan unit. Um, that is, it uses Doppler radar technology to track the club and the ball. Um, it's portable, so we, we do some fittings indoors, but here in Arizona, it's beautiful all the time and we can spend a lot of time outdoors as well. And you're a Callaway Master Fitter. So what exactly goes into finding the right clubs to fit your skill and your needs? That's a great question. A, a lot. Um, more than what people think <laughs> a lot of times. Um, so, you know, it really is, is a lot of player dependent stuff uh, based on how they swing the club, the shape of their golf swing, how fast the club moves. We can help them understand what they should be playing. Uh, too often people just go into a store and buy what's off the rack and it may not fit their game. And, uh, and, and they can't maximize their, their potential. So we always want to help people get the right equipment in their hands, um, make sure that they're doing everything they can to, to get the most out of their current game. So you're saying I can't blame the equipment anymore? Sometimes you can. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, I want to, get, yeah. I want to keep that one. All right. And uh, what about Callaway clubs makes them so effective? So Callaway has industry leading equipment through every single line and, and it's available for every range of player. That's what makes them so great. They have stuff for new golfers and, and all the way up to the tour level golfer. Um, so, you know, really they have something that's really good that fits every, every level of player. So it doesn't matter where you're at with your game, you can come here and try some Callaway equipment that, that will help you out. And then kind of going back to the basics, but what makes the right or the perfect golf ball? Ah, so the golf ball is important. It gets a lot of a lot of press, both good and bad uh. these days, right? So, um, but but the golf ball is important that you play the right golf ball for your game. Again, based on how fast you swing, um, you get different spin rates on the golf ball. The ball will react differently coming into the green and coming off the tee. So, uh, playing the right ball for you can really make a difference. Could get you an extra 10, 15 yards off the tee. It might help you control the ball a little more around the green. So obviously the right tools, the right equipment, the right ball, they can make a difference out there, but I'm guessing you also need the right strategy to conquer the monument course here at True North. So what do you say? Shall we go take a look? Let's do it. Well, Doug, on the walk over here, we were talking about the monument course and you mentioned that it's a first shot course. What did you mean by that? 
So it's important to get your ball in play off the tee. Um, True North can be intimidating from the tee box, but you actually have a lot of room. So once you play it a couple of times, you, you start to realize you, you, you where to go and what to do. But it's important to get that in there, to get that first shot in play, to give you a chance to attack the hole. Well, it is your signature course, so let's get to know it a little bit better. Sure. If you wouldn't mind just talking us through three holes on the front nine from the strategy to the challenges. Well, we'll start here. We're on the, the tee box for the third hole, uh, which is the signature hole for the Monument course, there is a large rock called the Monument in the middle of the fairway. This is a, a long par five. Um, longer hitters can challenge to the right of the rock and cut the corner. Um, whereas if you're not feeling as confident with your drive, you've got a large fairway to the left, but it takes away any chance of trying to get close to the hole in two shots. Um, from there, uh, the next hole, which I personally like, is the, the fifth. Um, the fifth is the number one handicap hole, meaning it plays as the hardest hole in the golf course. Um, but it's the only hole that has no bunkers on it. It's just wall-to-wall -wall grass. So what makes it so challenging is there's a large swale to the left of the green, and the hole is called swale. Uh, if you miss the green to the left, it's a really, really challenging wedge shot to a very narrow green. Then following that, we do give you a little makeup with a short hole on the six. It's a short par four, it plays it right at 300 yards. So long hitters can challenge the hole if they want to, um, but there's a lot of trouble that they can get into. There's bunkers and there's some uh, rock features and stuff that can attract your golf ball. Some great information and now is the whole course layout like this? Is the back nine very similar to the front nine? So the back nine is actually quite different from the front nine. Um, once you make the turn to number 10, you'll realize you're going to start heading uphill. Um, so the entire back nine runs along a ridge on the back side of Pinnacle Peak. Um, and lots of elevation changes. Beautiful, beautiful views on nearly every hole. But of course, what, when the views get better, the course gets more challenging. So um, lots of elevation changes to deal with starting, especially on our 14th hole, which is a long uphill par five. It, it requires two demanding uh, long shots to set up a third shot to a well-protected green. Um, but after we give you a long hole, we, we always give you a little short one for a little reprieve, but uh, don't rest too easy. Our 15th is a short drivable par four, but if you get too aggressive, there's a lot of trouble to get into with desert left and bunkers to the right. Um, you can find some trouble for sure. Uh, but all that, after, after you get done with that, you head over to the 16th tee, which is the best view on the entire property. You're up high on the backside of Pinnacle, Pinnacle Peak, hitting down to a green on a 225 yard part three. So it's a beautiful, beautiful view, challenging. You gotta have, hit a great, accurate, long club into that green to have a chance at birdie. Well, with this backdrop, the stage is set. You've given us some great insider tips, and I'm guessing the folks at home are just ready to get out here and give it a try. Four! If you've never played a desert course before, how do you handle a lie like this? And what are the rules if a desert rodent or animal get in the way? We've got the blueprint for all things desert golf as Golf AZ continues right after this. Welcome back to Golf AZ. Well, it is the rugged desert terrain and the lush greens out here that make this the picture perfect paradise for any golfer. However, it's that same scenery that can also provide some challenges. But don't worry, we've got the inside scoop on how to stay out of trouble. So the desert may be beautiful at True North, but it can also be very treacherous. If you happen to find yourself in the desert, I'm here to help you escape, okay? First thing to, to look for if your ball goes in the desert is, is assess the, the surroundings. As most of you know, if you hike and play golf out here, there can be some extra critters hanging around the desert. So always make sure if you go in the desert that you got a, a, a safe space and, you, and you're not gonna encounter any of our natural uh, creatures out there. Um, from there, decide if you can actually hit a shot, okay? Can you can you get to the back of the ball? Is, is a rock in the way or sometimes a cactus in the way? I'm sure we've all seen uh, instances of a golf ball stuck in a cactus. You don't want that to be your golf ball, okay? So um, once you decide, okay, I can hit the shot, um, just remember that there is a golden rule to all desert shots, and that is never have two in a row. Okay, so, so put your ego in your back pocket. Um, let's take a little bit higher lofted club, uh, maybe a little bit shorter club, and prepare to make a controlled swing. The idea is to get back in play and give yourself a chance on the next shot. So 
once you've decided on the club and, and the angle that you're gonna hit, um, now it's time to execute the shot. What's important when you find yourself on a desert lie is that we make a good strike into the back of the ball first. Okay, so when you set up to the ball, we're gonna play the ball farther back in our stance than what we would normally play it. So if I've got uh, an eight iron in my hands, I would normally play it in the middle of my stance. I'm gonna move it one golf ball back of my st in my stance to help me make contact with the ball first. The second thing that I'm gonna do is when I set up, I'm gonna move a little bit of weight. I'm gonna move my upper body toward the target. So as a right-handed player, I'm leaning into my left side. I feel more weight on my lead foot and I'm gonna keep it there as I execute the swing. So now you're ready, you're set up for success, you're ready for sw to swing. Remember, it's a controlled three-quarter back swing. Again, keeping your weight on that lead foot to help you hit down into the back of the ball first. Yikes, backing into a cactus? Well, that just gives a whole new meaning to the word hazard. Known for its beautiful landscape, True North is careful to protect the desert environment and is a proud participant in the Audubon Cooperative Sanctuary Program for Golf, an award-winning education and certification program that helps golf courses protect the environment and preserve that natural heritage when it comes to the game of golf. Well, just when you think you've seen it all, we've been down on the courses, seen some beautiful sights, but now we come up here and I can only imagine when you cue the sun sight, the reflection off the boulders, and all of a sudden you have that perfect spot for your dream day. We're talking weddings. And so we bring in the director of catering, Anya. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. And just take me through what it is like to have a wedding right here at True North. Yeah, so wedding days are absolutely gorgeous. Um, we do all all sizes of weddings, anything from a group of eight, which we actually just had a small intimate ceremony for eight guests last weekend, um, up to 200. My largest I've had here is 190 guests, so um, beautiful weddings of all different types of themes and um, decors. Every bride has a different vision, so we just try to make that happen for every couple, you know, exactly what they're looking for to make it their beautiful and perfect day. What additional personal touches or added experiences do you do for that wedding day? What all goes into it besides just that ceremony. Yeah, so start starting from the planning. Um, we, um, when a couple books our wedding here, we do a tasting. So the tasting is typically about a two hour meeting with me. We go over all of the details, um, all of the decor, um, down to how they want their napkin folded, everything. Obviously a bride and groom, they remember their wedding day, but there's those little things that stand out. So what do you want that couple to take with them? And what do you want your guests to say? Because I do know they still talk about it. The director of our show, Weston and his wife, Lisa, they got married here 15 years ago, but it's still ingrained in their memory. Yeah, I love when I hear that a couple is still talking about their wedding, you know, 10, 15 years later, or guests that are still raving about the food or the sunset that was here that I always joke, I cued that right on time. Um, so it is the little details and it's the little, you know, little moments that really make the day magical. And if you choose to have your special day out here, is golf included at all into it? Does the groom or the bride get to test out the course as well? Absolutely. So we always get them with that golfing groom package. So <laughs> we include a complimentary round of golf for the groom. After the wedding, he gets a true foursome card that's good for one calendar year. Um, so that's always, you know, sign on the line right there when I say anything about golf right there for the groom. So. And we've talked a lot about weddings, but do you host any other events here? Luncheons, dinner parties, business outings? We do, we host anything. So whatever you wanna celebrate, we'll host it. A mitzvah, a holiday party, a celebration of life, um, anything that you are wanting to celebrate, we can absolutely host. I would think when you have a setting like this, it's easy to bring on the celebration. Anya, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. And we also know when you head out to the golf course, well, you've got one thing on your mind after the game, right? That 19th hole. And when we come back, we are going to dive into all that Dynamite Grill has to offer. It's a lot more relaxing than it sounds, I promise. Well, no matter what you shoot, after a long day on the course, you probably want to find yourself the 19th hole either to celebrate or perhaps for a much needed pick me up. And so here I am at Dynamite Grill with the creative mastermind behind it all, Chef K Peck. Thank you so much for hosting us today. Yet what kind of atmosphere have you tried to create here for diners? What we try and do here is member for a day. You know, we're, we're a daily free course, we're open to the public. And uh, you know, after the golfers come off, try and have a you know, casual atmosphere. 
And it looks like just from the selection of food you prepared, you offer not only casual, but some fine dining as well. Absolutely. So what we have here, uh, we have our boneless uh, beef braised short rib sliders. And then uh, that's with uh, some uh, tomatoes, roasted garlic, aioli, crispy onion, little horseradish cheddar cheese, which is absolutely phenomenal. And then next is our uh, blackened shrimp tacos. It's got a little Baja slaw, pico de gallo, avocado, uh, aioli, little pickled red onions. And then next is our, uh, one of our entrees is our um, Scottish uh, pistachio crusted Scottish salmon. That's with roasted root vegetables, a celery root puree, a little balsamic reduction and chive oil. Sorry, don't mind me. I know I haven't eaten, but I feel like I'm already in a food coma. This is amazing. <laughs> and I know too on your menu, you offer um, breakfast, lunch and dinner. What kind of meals aside from this can diners expect to find? Well, like, like you said, we also do breakfast. So we uh, currently open at uh, 6 a.m. Uh, the golfers can come and get, uh, you know, one of my favorite things is our uh, breakfast burrito. It's just awesome. So, uh, and then aside from breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we also host some, some uh, private wine dinners. Um, you know, so guests can come, and that's more of our fine dining uh -huh. atmosphere and it's kind of exclusive. We limit the number of guests and change up the, the different wines we do and I just pair different foods with that. So do you have to golf at the courses here? To no, experience? not no. at all, not at all. And uh, you know, we're one of the few restaurants out in, in Troon, out in North Scottsdale, um, especially in this area. So we, we cater to all the residents in the area as well. What do you hope that diners and uh, folks who attend here walk away with after this experience? Because you obviously put a lot of attention and time and detail into this. Yes, you know, what I try to do is have fresh ingredients. Um, you know, just the views are astonishing. So I try and, you know, um, you know, try and make my food just as beautiful as the, the scenery out there. Speaking of beautiful, I feel like you've somehow captured a sunset in a glass here. What is Yes, this, this is one of our uh, signature cocktails. This is our prickly pear margarita. Uh, it's got a little Grand Marnier uh, on top and then a uh, nice crisp uh, white wine here is our Rombauer, Ron you know, which pairs really nicely with that Scottish salmon there. Well, I would love to sit and chat with you, but I'm not going to lie. I kind of want to dig in. It's been a long <laughs> day and this looks great. So thank you so much, Jeff, for being here with us. And now after a long day on the course, I am ready to unwind with this beautiful scenery, this great feast upon me. Well, this is just something I'm guessing you at home want to come out here to experience. So get out here. In the meantime, I'm Kate Longworth. We'll see you next time on Golf AZ. Cheers.